committee until the subsequent quorum arrives. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to hear bills, and then um, uh, as we reach a quorum, we'll, we'll take a vote on those bills. Um, and um, I'd ask everybody to turn off their cell phones so we can uh, avoid also um, conversations in the room. If you want to talk, leave, basically. Uh, uh, unless you're up here as senators, of course, and, and the presenters. Um, we have some changes in our agenda. AB 8 has been pulled at the request of the offer. So that's item number one on our agenda. That's been pulled. And um, at this point, um, we have uh, eight items on the consent calendar. Um, just uh, at the proper time, we'll make a motion on all eight of them, but I want to list them for you so you can see which ones are on consent. Those are items four, 16, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, and 24. Those items are consent calendar items. So um, essentially, essentially, we have uh, 15 bills to hear today. We'd like people to be brief and succinct so we can get through the day and um, uh, consider each bill in a fair manner. So I'll begin, I'll begin uh, the session with, call, in, in file order, we'll call item two. Uh, uh, item two. Right. Oh yeah, that's right, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, Elisa Alejo, you rec um, Luis, you have to go to another meeting, correct? Yes. So, so um, I'm gonna have uh, Luis Alejo uh, present his bill first, excuse me. Uh, Assemblyman Ting will have Luis, uh, uh, Luis Alejo present item eight. Um, this is AB 400. Uh, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, um, I'm here to present AB 400. And I'd like to thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, for letting me present first as I have to drive down to the district. And also uh, thank you and your staff for working with me for the amendments that are uh, currently in print. Uh, this bill will allow the use of, of the state's existing changeable message signs mm -hmm. to remind voters to participate in statewide primary, special, and general elections. These messages will not be displayed in times of an emergency to public safety and will not take precedence uh, over the amber alerts or blue alerts. Mm -hmm. Further, this bill will not put at risk federal transportation funds as the bill requires the Department of Transportation to receive a waiver uh, from the federal government before such messages can be displayed. Voter participation, as you know, has been dramatically low in recent elections. Last year, we had an, a dismal 18.3% voter turnout in the statewide primary. That was the lowest turnout since 1946. In addition, only 73.3% of eligible voters are registered to vote in California, and we need everyone who is eligible to go and register so that they can have a say in the future of our great state. We all know the seriousness, uh, seriousness of the California drought and the uh, message reminders, serious drought, help save water, which is currently uh, being displayed on our message signs throughout the state. This message has helped remind millions of motorists every day that they need to do their part to conserve water. But this bill will do the same to ensure civic participation grows and remind everyone to take part in our electoral process. Let's make a cost-effective, efficient, and innovative use of our existing infrastructure to remind voters to do their part on the election day and to register to vote so they can participate in our democracy. I'm proud to share that this innovative bill has the support of Secretary of State Alex Padilla, the nonprofit uh, Vote, and the California School Employee Association and Mi Familia Vota California. I respectfully ask for an I vote, and I have with me here today James Schwab of Secretary of State Alex Padilla's office who speak in support, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Assemblyman. Um, you have the floor. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, uh, Chair and members. James Schwab on behalf of Secretary of State Alex Padilla. The Secretary strongly supports AB 400, which will help increase awareness of important election information and promote voting participation. In 2014, turnout among eligible voters was 31%, which ranked 43rd in the United States. Clearly, we need to do more. One common reason that eligible voters give for not voting is that they don't know where and how to vote. According to the 2014 Harvard University survey of the performance of American elections, a full 15% of respondents find it difficult to locate their polling place. Of California non-voters, 22% said that they did not know where to vote was a factor in their decision not to participate in the 2014 midterm elections. Additionally, companies like Google confirm that there is a dramatic spike in internet searches regarding election information prior to election day 
and it cor its correlations to voter participation. AB 400 is an important step to help inform eligible voters of important election information. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Any other testimony in favor of this bill? Uh, do we have any other testimony in favor of the bill? And seeing none, are there opponents to the bill would like to come forward and testify? Uh, questions of the committee? Okay. I have a question if I could. Senator Gaines. Great. Senator Menelejo, how are you? Very good. Good, good. Uh, thank you for bringing this bill forward. I, I'm i trying to get some clarity, though, um, because there's more than, there's a lot of electronic signs throughout California, and I know that some of them are used for advertising and things, and they will put uh, alerts, like an amber alert, on those signs. So I'm trying to clarify, are these the, Cal, are these the Caltrans signs that are used for an amber alert or uh, a traffic issue? Um, that, that is correct. It is, it okay. Is, yeah. And, right. and uh, the amendments we took also made, clarified that Amber alerts or blue alerts take precedent, um, yeah. or public safety takes precedent um, over these reminders. Yeah. Okay. All right. Because I think um, your issue is a is is valid. Very important that we're um, emphasizing how important it is to vote. My concern is that are we then creating a problem with um, making sure that we're getting uh, traffic safety related messages out. Uh, and should we be mixing those messages on a sign that's designed uh, for a, a traffic or safety update uh, versus a message uh, on the voting? And just from my perspective, it seems to me that we ought to be speaking to uh, the folks that control the advertising signs statewide and as a public service, asking them to encourage uh, greater uh, voter uh, Turnout. Well, we drafted this bill so that there isn't uh, any conflict with any of those other messages that you indicated. Plus, this is only designed uh, to deal, as we mentioned earlier, special, general, and primaries. It'll be one day, at most two days, during an election like um, 2016, and in some some uh, years, no message whatsoever all year long. So it's very limited. One day for a primary, one day for the general. And sure. if there's a statewide special election sure. that one day, and that's it. Okay. All right. Thank you for that clarification. I still have some concerns, but thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Uh, Senator Bates has a question. Now, um, and certainly I, I concur with my colleague that uh, it is a very important uh, message to, out there uh, to our uh, residents and uh, voters to vote. But I would be concerned that if the issue is they don't know where to vote, that message signs aren't going to solve that problem. If it's reminding them to vote, there's a lot of things, other ways to remind them to vote, rather than the message sign that could be, if it's just reminding them to vote, but you can't tell them where to go to vote or put a, um, a website on there, uh, you have to put more and more information on there, which could then be driver distraction. So I'm not sure that is the, the method or the instrument to use for reminding people that today you vote or you vote tomorrow, whatever the message would be. So I think more information for the committee is really important before we move forward on something like this because it is something that was not intended originally with these signs. It was really about uh, traffic and uh, certainly the safety and that might be abridged with moving in this direction until we have some more specificity of how that, that would be helpful in telling them where to vote and how to vote if that's the major concern of people not voting. But, but in the same light, um, reminders about the drought were not intended when the previous uh, when the electronic signs were installed mm -hmm. across the state, but we're using it because it's a very important, a critical issue, a very drastic issue for a state. And similarly, there's an emergency in terms of our democracy, and we have such a low voter turnout that we have a simple way, a very limited use of these electronic signs, but yet innovative way to remind people that it's election day and how important it is for them to get out and exercise that fundamental right. Um, I think this is something that it's worth trying in our state to see how it works. Okay, other, other questions? Um, thank you very much, <laughs> and we'll... Um, uh, hold this over until we reach quorum. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate it. I appreciate you, you coming down. Uh, 
Uh, item two will be our next item. Item two is AB 40. Uh, Assemblymember Ting's here. Assemblymember, welcome, and you have the floor. Thank you, Senator. Mr. Chair, uh, AB 40 simply protects sidewalk access for pedestrians and bikers along every bridge in the state. Okay. Uh, this bill started as a bill to only uh, ban fees, or <coughs> pedestrian and biker fees, for the Golden Gate Bridge, but we took amendments in Assembly Trans to have every single bridge do it. At this point, there are only three bridges that actually charge pedestrians <coughs> to walk across the bridge, and they're all border crossing bridges. So they're bridges that are either contiguous to Canada or to Mexico, and because of that border crossing, they actually charge a fee. Separate from that, there's actually no other bridge in the U.S. that charges fees for pedestrians and bikers. We think it sends a wrong signal. Uh, we need to reduce petroleum usage by 50 percent as per the, per, the governor's, um, uh, per the governor's goals, and we think this is one small way to make sure that we continue to stay on that path. Uh, okay. Respectfully ask for a vote. I think we have one witness for the bike, California Thank bicycle. Thank you. Witnesses, please. Sam, you have the floor. Uh, Steve Wallach, on behalf of the bike, California Bicycle Coalition, we urge your support for this bill as a means of pr promoting um, active transportation options along these, uh, these bridge corridors. Okay. Support. Other witnesses? Are there other speakers in favor of this bill? Please come forward. I see none. How about um, opposition? I'll call for the opposition if there's any opposition. And I don't see anybody coming forward here. Uh, questions from the committee? Any questions? Um, no questions. You have a close. I just respectfully ask for your vote. Thank you. And um, we will uh, take this matter up when we reach a quorum. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Cheryl Brown. Oh, oh, cool, Cooley, excuse me. You're next. We're going file order. Cheryl's number, let's see, okay, she's number 14. Okay, 14. We'll go to item 11. I didn't see him there. Uh, AB 652. Um, this is a relinquishment bill for Route 16, correct? Correct. And you have the floor. Very good. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members. Um, I'm here on AB 652, which pro proposed to relinquish from Caltrans, the state of California, to the county of Sacramento, a section of roadway in South Sacramento County between a southbound road Watt to Grant Line. Uh, the area in question, uh, before we had SB 375, before we had AB 32, Sacramento County was looking to the future where we expected growth in our county. It was anticipated that this growth would be out the Jackson Highway corridor, the area affected by this <coughs> bill. Uh, the blueprint process, which was adopted in December of 2004, before AB 32, envisioned that the county would grow over the next 50 years in this area. This roadway, Jackson Highway, runs right through this area. And so really to sustain that growth, which is the vision of how, how the county would grow within the urban growth area, you need to have planning for roadways, uh, the flow through this urbanized area. This is the blueprint vision. It's really the template for what became SB 375. So this bill, AB 652, will simply relinquish a portion of State Route 16 to Sacramento County in order to improve the route in advance of major new development projects in the area, which are, as I say, consistent with our blueprint and SB 375 planning process. Um, I have Mike Pinrose, Sacramento County Department of Transportation, uh, here to speak in support, as well as Mr. Matt Carpenter from SACOG, who can speak to the adoption of this blueprint process. Uh, the bill has reads a little bit like a uh, meets and bounds description of property because within the alignment of the road, there's both Sacramento County Roadway and also some city ranch over roadway just because the city boundary runs down the center line. Um, but with that, I would turn it to um, Mr. Penrose of Sacramento County. Thank you, Assemblyman. Uh, committee members, Chairman Bell, uh, I'm Mike Penrose. I'm with the Department of Transportation for Sacramento County. And uh, by way of a little bit of background here, uh, last year, AB 1957 uh, authorized the relinquishment of State Route 16 from Howe Avenue up to Watt Avenue. Uh, that was approved and is in process for being completed now. Uh, we're back this year with um, uh, Assembly Bill 652 to complete the relinquishment from Watt Avenue out to Grant Line uh, Road. Uh, we're seeking this further relinquishment because within the urbanized area of Sacramento County, State Route 16 has already and will continue to change from a rural conventional highway to an urban arterial. 
Consistent with the county's general plan, Sacramento um, Area Council of Governments Metropolitan Transportation Plan, Sacramento County intends to modify State Route 16 through Sacramento County between Watt and Grant Line to better serve the future travel demands and serve the planned urbanized area more appropriately than an interregional highway type facility. Our plan is to add capacity to meet growth over the next 30 years, ultimately expanding the current two-lane rural highway to a six-lane complete street with bikes, pedestrians, and transit facilities. Um, I'd like to thank the Assemblyman for authoring this important measure and respectfully request an aye vote. Thank you, Mr. Penrose. Other witnesses, please. Matt Carpenter, with the, <laughs> Matt Carpenter with the Sacramento Area Council of Governments, or SACOG, and we urge your support for this bill for the very reasons that were identified by Mr. Penrose and Assemblymember Cooley. Mr. Chair, members, David Jones, on behalf of the City of Sacramento and supporting the county's uh, bill. We had a bill last year that took care of the city's portion of the, of the roadway to be relinquished, and we support this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, other witnesses in support? I don't see any. Uh, how about opposition? Witnesses opposed? Please come forward. Right up here. And welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, my name is John Plass. I'm County Supervisor and Chair of our Amador County Transportation Commission. Okay. I've been involved in this uh, relinquishment process uh, ever since we were first notified about it, um, which was actually two years after it began being planned to be relinquished to Sacramento County. Um, it is Amador County's contention that there is one entity and one entity only that is responsible for the establishment of a fully functional state system of highways, and that's Caltrans and the oversight commission, the oversight function of the legislature. This route is an inter-regional inter route, legislatively designated inter-regional route. It serves Amador County as the main lifeline between their capital, their airport, and any other functions that uh, need to exist down here in Sacramento. And uh, we continue to oppose this. We've worked hard with Sacramento County to try to craft a, a compromise solutions at, at Assemblymember Cooley's request. We spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to do that and have frankly gotten nowhere. We feel that this highway can, needs to continue to exist as an interregional route that it is already designated and that this legislation is, is precedent setting in its nature. Never before has an interregional route been relinquished to local control. And uh, at our, at our uh, request, uh, this young man from uh, RCRC is, is here to support us as well. But I yeah, before we, we hear from other speakers, are you finished? Supervisor? Yes, sir. Okay, I have to call the call the uh, a roll call to establish a quorum. Oh, okay. Okay, you know how that works. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'd like to call the roll call for the quorum. Bell? Here. Bell present. Canella? Here. Canella present. Allen? Bates? Here. Bates present. Gaines? Present. Gaines present. Galgiani? Galgiani present. Leva? Here. Leva present. McGuire? Mendoza? Here. Mendoza present. Roth? Wykowski? We have established a quorum so we can vote, Supervisor. Thank you, sir. Um, okay, uh, next witness is sir, yes. Please. Mr. Chairman, members, Paul Smith with the Rural Counties Association. As I mentioned when this bill was heard in the assembly, it is kind of with regret that we're here opposing uh, AB 652. Um, we do so, as I think Supervisor Plass indicated, um, Highway 16 is an interregional route. It connects um, many of the foothill communities in our organization to the urban needs um, in Sacramento for those <coughs> folks that live in there uh, in, in the foothills and therefore uh, making this highway uh, relinquished to the county whereby it loses its state interest is a primary concern to our organization. Uh, we respect that Sacramento County has land use issues and this is a, a corridor that it's identified as important for those land use discussions but we also think that on balance um, this legislature should err with abundant caution when relinquishing state highways that serve an interregional route is at stake. 
Um, we'd hope that uh, we wouldn't find ourselves in this position today at this part of the process and that we would hope we would have an agreement. Uh, unfortunately, we've not. But because this is such a vital corridor to so many people in the rural areas, particularly in the southern Sacramento region, uh, we feel that uh, relinquishment is not in the best interest of the state, nor uh, Amador, Calaveras, Alpine, El Dorado counties, and therefore we must oppose. Okay, thank you. Other witnesses? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. John Geddon, the Executive Director of the Amador County Transportation Commission. Just to reiterate, the RCRC represents 34 counties who feel the same way we do. Amador County is not alone in this opposition to the bill. 34 counties also desire interregional protections. And 34 counties would withdraw their opposition to this bill if minor and reasonable in, 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 inclusions into the bill were allowed. And specifically, the word interregional after engineering standards and in the original bill on page four and the analysis bill before you, <clears throat> we're looking for just minor uh, inclusions of interregional in two locations to protect this. I'd just like to draw your attention to your own analysis and the comments in your bill. According to the author, Assembly, Honorable yeah. Assemblyman Cooley, planned local development will transform state, state Route 16 into a route of both interregional and local significance. Assemblyman Cooley recognizes that we, it is an interregional route and we are just seeking reasonable protections for that status. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Other questions, comments from uh, opposition? Um, perhaps uh, we can get a response to the concerns of the opposition. Well, this is, the bill deals with a corridor which is growing currently and is the situs of the expected population growth in Sacramento County. The bill, coming out of the Transportation Committee, we added three amendments to the bill to kind of bulk up the planning process that Sacramento County would do. The bill added, the County of Sacramento shall ensure the continuity of traffic flow on the relinquished portions of Route 16 within its jurisdiction, including but not limited to any traffic signal progression which deals with travel through the corridor, any relinquished agreement shall require that the County of Sacramento administer the operation and maintenance of the roadway in a manner that is consistent with professional traffic engineering standards, which is the standards that a county would typically administer. And any relinquished agreement shall require the County of Sacramento to ensure that appropriate traffic studies or analyses will be performed to substantiate decisions affecting traffic on the roadway. So from my standpoint of working with the county, it is a, the section of road we are transferring terminates miles from the next county border continuing to the southeast six or eight miles away it is an area where growth is expected that growth is a a six county vision so it the the planned growth grew out of something known as the blueprint here in sacramento county where it was adopted in december of 2004 and actually the meeting where it was adopted there were hundreds of city officials and county officials brought together because it's a Six county region. I do know that Amador County is not a part of SACOG, but every other county and city's representatives were part of this collaborative process, setting this goal, this growth goal. This bill will support that. The transfer of ownership will, as, as the remarks by Mr. Penrose, will actually expand the size of this route so that it'll, it can carry more local and regional traffic. Just as on Highway 50, when my city formed, we started adding auxiliary lanes on Highway 50 to, in, to improve point-to-point point point throughput on Highway 50 while allowing the other corridor traffic to continue on through. The vision is to expand this roadway. So I think the issue here is that um, there is growth all along this corridor. In, in the 2000s, uh, travel times were greatly improved for areas above Sutter Creek by the construction of a bypass that took off uh, the Jackson Highway from about Amador City, so you didn't have to go through Amador City, uh, Sutter Creek, <coughs> kind of a small bottleneck. So we have, through improvement, improved traffic flows generally, and I think that the mm -hmm. county will do that in this section of the roadway. Um, okay. Can I ask a question of the, the engineering standard? He mentioned that um, the word interregional denotes some kind of standard of uh, construction. Now, as development occurs along here, uh, you're going to convert, the, you're going to improve 
this section of uh, Highway 16 to uh, a certain standard, will it be analogous to the standards that uh, the county supervisor from Almador County is talking about, the uh, interregional standard? What's the difference between what you're doing and what his um, goal would be? Um, thank you for asking that. Can I, can I just provide a little context about the interregional also? Uh, because uh, if you want, you can do it quickly. I'll do it quickly. In law right now, yeah. the interregional definition coming from Amador County to Sacramento County is to the urban area. That's the definition, the okay. westerly end. Currently, the interregional boundary is on Bradshaw, which is two miles of this eight mile segment that we're asking to relinquish. So that whole segment is not even an interregional route yet, right? Just uh, from definition. And over time, what we see happening is due to the development. The urbanized area is going to move further and further out to Grant Line Road, which is the long-term anticipated growth in this community, which the assemblyman has been referring yeah, to. I understand. So ultimately, the interregional route is going to be coterminous with the end of this, from definition. I think from a facilities type, the interregional terminology is not one that we use at the local level. That's more of a, of a Caltrans state level facility. And what it's really pointing to is developing that road with very limited access, and with a higher type, uh, like highway or freeway highway type facility to be built through there. That would be more the interregional facility. That's not what we plan to do ultimately with this road. We would have, we call it a thoroughfare, which would be a six lane road that would have signals spaced at about a half mile spacing at closest, limited access between those signals, and a heavy uh, interface for all modes through that corridor. It'd be more and, like an expressway? It, it, some, it, not exactly an expressway definition either, but what it will do is it'll have throughput for people that want to travel all the way to downtown as well as local circulation. And we think yeah. those things need to be balanced. Now, right now it's a two lane road. Right now it's a two lane rural yeah. highway that. Uh, Actually, it's, uh, it's, or, is it, isn't it true, uh, he would know, uh, one of the oldest roads is a wagon train road from the mountains, isn't it? I, right? believe, I, right? I believe so. It's I'm going to say, I, th I think that's. Probably this goes back to the 1840s, uh, this road. Yeah, the uh, There's the Carson a lot of route. historical buildings along there, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The yeah. Carson route would have come down through some of this area. And I know California is. Latrobe and, yeah. Okay. But, but, well, I think that's the issue. I think uh, I think the county wants to be assured that they would have access. I don't, I don't expect a two-lane road would be converted to some kind of freeway or anything, but I think... You know, there's got to be a understanding that the, the, the county will be served uh, at a proper level and not create problems. And, and, part and, and of that, the issue, that requires c collaboration, I guess you might say. Part of the so, issue is the state doesn't have funds to develop the road. Yeah. So as you, as you develop it over time, you'll have quicker response times from a safety standpoint. There'll be fire stations out that corridor. There'll be a variety of public facilities which will improve the roadway and avoid problems of congestion. Um, so it's a, but it, it yeah. anyway, that's the essence of this bill. Okay, the, nor the normal course of action is uh, the relinquishments are approved by the legislature, um, you know, and they go through a process that Caltrans uh, gets that. And then Caltrans, <laughs> will negotiate a relinquishment agreement that will entail donating money to the county to do improvements to upgrade the road, correct? Are you planning to upgrade the road with those monies? The, uh, the monies that we've talked about with Caltrans thus far, in a very uh, general way, has been to bring it into a state of good repair. No capacity yeah. enhancements. Yeah, and they right. most recently have gone through and put a wearing surface on that whole area. So that, that yes. part is in pretty good condition. Uh, but we have had discussion about drainage facilities and other roadside facilities that they would need to upgrade. So when you do relinquishment, there, there's a transaction which involves payment from the state to the local to relinquish the road. Okay. Uh, we have questions from our committee. I know you probably do. So, Senator Gaines. Thank yes. you. Uh, <laughs> I want to thank the supervisor for coming and testifying. Pardon and. It. Uh, I guess I'd like to just get a little clarity um, in terms of the ability for someone commuting, commuting from Amador, their ability to get to their job if it's in Sacramento County. Um, I wonder if you could expand on that a little bit. Um, 
it sounds like it's um, my impression is the road's going to go from two to six lanes over time as development occurs within Sacramento County. So then um, the next question would be the ability of someone coming from out of county to get through that portion of the county to where their job may be. And, and if I may address that, uh, and I would say on the inverse commute of that as well. Um, and the reason I've mentioned that is because the state has recently expanded Mule Creek State uh, Correctional Facility in Ione. Our studies have indicated that almost 50% of the uh, correctional officers and employees there commute into Ione from Sacramento County and this region. But of greater concern is, yes, our concern has always been the functionality of that route, Senator, or, uh, Senator Gaines. Um, the, the county proposes to add 15 additional stoplights along there. They talk about that it will no longer be an interregional route. It will be a local arterial growing to six lanes. But a local arterial is, frankly, Watt Avenue or Howe Avenue, as it currently exists in Sacramento County, hardly conducive to efficient functionality and commutes of either people or, or products. So that has been our concern all along. Uh, Mr. Bell, you mentioned an expressway standard. That's what we actually put forth in a proposal to Sacramento County as an acceptable compromise by us, such as Rancho Cordova. The city of Rancho Cordova has adopted for the Sunrise Corridor limited access points, signal spacing at half mile or greater, and we would be satisfied with that. But again, uh, in those attempts to reach a compromise, we have not been able to accomplish that feat with Sacramento County. So, um, yes, significant impact. And, and as that point of, of uh, congestion moves further eastward, because of the alignment of Highway 50, uh, which one would argue that Amador residents try to get over to Highway 50 as quickly as possible to utilize its functionality and, and speeds, um, as you go eastward, the distance between Highway 16 and Highway 50 increases dramatically. At Watt Avenue, it's maybe a mile or so apart. By the time you get up to Grant Line Road or Sunrise, you're talking several miles. Okay. So um, access to that route is, is of primary concern for Amador. And if State Route 16 turns into Watt Avenue, uh, it's not conducive for interregional travel. Okay, I'm wondering if Assembly Member Cooley, if you could respond to that, because that, that's an issue in my mind. But I'm also weighing that against the fact that this is part of the blueprint uh, for the yeah. six-county region, and it's being designated as an area for what I think is responsible planned growth uh, for the future. So I'm trying to weigh these issues of uh, ability to commute, while at the same time, uh, your ability to self-determine as a county. Yes. I do want to... To start on this, I want to say uh, the amendments I read to you were not taken in the Transportation Committee. They were actually taken after we went out. I asked the county to look closely at what might be done to be more accommodating in Damador County. And so we, I was sort of a volunteer. It was clear the bill had got out of the Transportation Committee, and these were not objectionable amendments. But there was an effort to amend the bill to further address their issue. Yeah, I think this is, you're sort of seeing a conflict here because we have policy to promote more compact development, development near jobs, to reduce transportation costs generally as a part of our broad global warming strategy. The county working within that framework has says this is actually where we'd like the growth to happen. Rancho Cordova has become the number two job center and all of these areas are very proximate to Rancho Cordova. It's why Rancho Cordova is part of the, part of the property here. This development would be proximate to jobs in Sacramento County. And so pe people who have a means to move easily to this portion of the county for the downtown or elsewhere, this sort of supports what we're trying to achieve statewide. The SACOG growth plan was the pattern, I think, for Carol Steinberg's SB 375. So I do sort of see a, a conflict here in the sense that if we hold off on the ability of Sacramento County working with SACOG, work with the Transportation Funding Agency to put in place reasonable infrastructure to support an SB 375 compliant vision. If we hold off on that, then we create dislocations in the way development would happen. Um, you know, change does ensue over time, and clearly the vision is there are going to be more people. I will say this, it would be contrary 
to the self-interest of Sacramento County to build a roadway which elicits such congestion that no one can get through the corridor. It would be self-defeating. So I think that there is an under, well, while we are hearing from the county that they feel this bill is compatible with SACOG and with the regional plan and with transportation standards, it, it sort of defies comprehension that they could allow a sort of gridlock to emerge that would frustrate the residents of Amador and Calaveras and Alpine uh, because that would be equally frustrating to the, to the residents of this area. I think there is a mutuality of self-interest, though it does not appear surrounding this bill. I think they all have an interest in getting that traffic through this corridor. And Well, um, I think this bill is not intended to um, solve your interregional governmental problems. Okay, so that's the first thing I can say. Um, but um, I think we want to encourage that. Okay, we want to encourage the dialogue to continue. I think, you know, talk is important. Um, what is the uh, daily traffic on this road projected to be? And how many lanes are you planning? We ultimately anticipate having six lanes, and it'll vary from the further furthest east limit, which is the oh. Grant Line area, on the order of about 38,000. And as you get further into Watt Avenue, which is the furthest westerly yeah. end, yeah. Uh, it would be up in the mid-60s. Okay. And this is a 30-year build-out. It's a significant growth pattern that's anticipated there. 60s so, a lot. Yeah. So. Okay. Right, might have to go eight lanes there. Just, just one short comment. Um, the recommendation we have is to approve it, but I would say we need to, you guys need to keep talking. I mean, that's my opinion. Mr. Chairman, if I may? No, Senator Gaines, that's a board. If I, um, I, I would ask the same, that uh, if Sacramento County would continue to, to work uh, with Amador, uh, I think the issue of, this expressway, which I guess would have half a mile increments, uh, which is similar to what you're describing, Ken, in terms of your intersections. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know what the designations are for, you know, you should have a, a letter grade, right, for the impact of traffic at each intersection. And I, I don't know what that is, but certainly we want to make sure that that flow could continue. Uh, but I am supportive of your ability as a county to provide housing needs for the region. And um, so to the degree that you can work with Amador, I would appreciate that and uh, trying to address uh, these uh, multiple uh, needs. I do want to say, you know, I, I indicated that yeah. I pressed the county to volunteer some amendments that would be somewhat responsive, even though the bill had got through the policy committee because I felt that I understand the benefit of that. Yeah. And and one of those provisions I just want to point out, any relinquishment agreement shall require the County of Sacramento to ensure that appropriate traffic studies or analyses will be performed to substantiate decisions affecting traffic on the roadway. So they've, right. they're already, this was their language, committing themselves to sound traffic studies. So can the engineers work together, the, the Amador County engineers and the Sacramento engineers work together on it? On the traffic study, that seems like a logical thing to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, be professionals and work together. Seems like that's easy thing to do. Um, for the record, we have done uh, significant studies out there already that have been in cooperation back and forth. Um, right. And there has been disagreement about the, uh, the technical studies themselves, the right. findings of those studies, as well as the recommendations that should come out of those studies. Just, right. it doesn't mean we can't continue to uh, discuss and look at these issues, but fundamentally it's come down to, uh, I think, a discussion about a throughput position for people that are in the foothills that need to get through this corridor to go certain places, and the ultimate development and interaction of that type of facility with the long-term growth in Sacramento County. And it has, it's a challenge. <laughs> it's, you know, and, and so what, we're, what we've been saying is that we think that long-term growth and this facility being integrated with that growth area is really the highest priority. And we're going to allow, as the assemblyman talked about, we have an interest in people getting from that area downtown as well as the folks that are coming from the foothills. We do see in the long-term congestion growth out there. And we're not hiding it. The planned growth is, is, is going to create a lot of congestion on that facility. Caltrans has said to us, 
uh, repeatedly, they've been asked on this, are you ever going to make any investments from a capacity perspective in this quarter? And they've said basically no. Now, it doesn't mean somebody couldn't force them, but their position has been no. We're going to maintain it, and we're going to extract bits from development when they come through, which is a hodgepodge approach. That's not our issue. Uh, uh, yeah, essentially. Yeah. i tell you what my issue is, okay. is the interregional issue. So, so that's the issue. Uh, so, you know, when it's going to go through a process, uh, we, we deal with the relinquishment. Um, it's going to go to the California Transportation, uh, Caltrans, and the Commission. And when it goes through that process, you, better, you want to work together. Got it? I mean, on behalf right. of... Essentially.